Okay, welcome everybody to today's theory seminar. Um, so today we have James Holland from Rutgers who uh, had uh, who worked there on his PhD thesis uh, and we were started this year with his um, advisor and he has already defended it and it was ready <laughs> and also ready for his talk. So, um, thanks. Uh, yeah, so today I'm going to be talking about uh, forcing more choice and a sense of dependent choice over the chain model. Um, so the uh, motivations of this work really comes from uh, thinking about LMR uh, really as L of omega omega and trying to generalize that to forward omega for the chain model. Yeah. So uh, the reason why is if we look at something like L of R, um, there's a lot of study around it. There's a lot of really nice results. Um, and there's basically standard ways of trying to approach this model in terms of what axioms we're assuming. So you, know, you have all sorts of determinacy axioms, um, things like theta is regular, uh, how theta and stuff interacts with forcing and all these other sort of really nice results um, around L of R. Uh, theta here, just as a quick definition, is just the least ordinal that is not a surjective image of the reals. Okay. okay. So if we look, however, at this L or omega chain model, uh, there aren't really these standard ways of approaching it, uh, which is a bit of a shame. And part of what is motivating uh, this, this project. Okay. So despite the fact that we don't have these standard ways of approaching it, we do have these kind of concreteness properties about the chain model, or at least its theory. So if we have um, you know, sufficiently many large cardinals, uh, the theory of the chain model is unchanged by forcing. So uh, as a little bit of a subtlety, what this means is that the chain model as interpreted in the ground model has the same theory as the chain model as interpreted in the generic extension, right? So obviously, if we force over the chain model, we can change its theory. Uh, I mean, consistently we have the terminacy in the chain model, but uh, we can add a well order of the reals and force that determinacy is false. So, um, yeah, we we can change the theory of the chain model by forcing, or rather, we can change uh, the theory of the model through forcing, but we're not changing the theory of the chain model through forcing. It's a small subtle thing. Anyway, so the the main question is then. What is the theory of this chain model, right? What should we assume while working with it? Okay. And uh, the way that we're trying to approach this question with this project is to try and find the analog of theta for the chain model. Okay. And uh, what we're going to be calling this is the, the Thorn sequence in the paper. Um, and the idea is that. Theta is to L of R as this Thorn sequence is to L or to omega, the chain model. And we really do get this kind of generalization of uh, theta because theta is just going to be the, the first non trivial thing in this Thorn sequence. Okay. okay, so what do I mean by the chain model? Well, the original sort of motivation for the chain model was looking at L formed in different languages. Uh, so Looking at things in L, let's say kappa omega for various kappa, um, and I guess things have kind of settled on L omega one omega instead of the usual first order logic. Um, another characterization is that it's the smallest inner model that is closed under countable sequences. Uh, and another way to write it is just L or omega. Okay. So there's, there's a lot of these different characterizations and sort of another one is that you can have your own hierarchy to define what this L or omega is, um, where, you know, at limit stages you take unions, you start with the empty set and successor stages you just take definable subsets of C alpha, but then you also throw in all countable sequences of alpha. It's just another way of defining all this stuff and making it precise. Okay, so, one neat fact about uh, the Chang model is that it satisfies dependent choice, um, just like with L of R, but assuming in the wider universe we have dependent choice. I mean, in this case, it's even more obvious, right? Because the sequence witnessing dependent choice is an omega sequence. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, 
So uh, for L of R, uh, we can certainly have uh, determinacy, and so the, the failure of choice, but again, at least we have dependent choice in this model. Um, just for a quick rundown, determinacy is a statement that's relating sets of reals to reals. Uh, and because we don't have maximum choice, the you know, motivating question is what is the cardinality of R or the next cardinal above R, in this sort of idea. Okay. I mean, we can't well order R, but uh, we do at least have some sort of continuum, continuum hypothesis at play here. Uh, and the, the analog for the next cardinal above R in this sort of world is going to be theta, which is the first ordinal that R can't subject onto. So, of course, under choice, theta is just going to be the cardinality of R plus. Um, but in AD, uh, you don't have that cardinality, so theta could be quite large. Okay, and if we are in this sort of world with determinacy uh, and potentially some dependent choice, we have lots of properties of this theta, lots of results around it. Uh, one example of this sort of thing is if R surjects onto an ordinal, then it also surjects onto the power set of that ordinal. Okay, so th this is really just talking about ordinals that are less than theta and what properties they have. Um, you also get results about regular cardinals less than theta being measurable. There's all sorts of things like this. So theta and L of R are, are well studied. Again, just motivating that property. Okay, but again, the question then becomes what is something similar for uh, the chain model L or omega? Well, if we sort of iterate this process, we can think about what is theta for theta in the sense that uh, we take the, the least ordinal that is not a surjective image of theta to the omega. So this definition here uh, makes that more precise, but we start out with omega, and then we can consider omega to the omega r and see what that does not surject onto. So that's thorn one will be actually this theta. And then you can consider theta to the omega and what ordinal that doesn't surject onto. And then you can consider, so that'll be thorn two, and you can consider thorn two to the omega, so on and so forth. And you just take uh, super lumps out of the stages. And so you get this, this sequence of thorns. And so one question that you might have from this is, does this thorn sequence have similar properties to theta? Right? Sure, we're coming up with this new concept, but I mean, is it at all really a good analogy for theta? Uh, and, and unfortunately, in general, we don't really know. I mean, obviously, if we're working in something like L, then all of this is sort of trivial. But in, in general, we don't know. And so some better questions that might be good to ask are, can this sequence have uh, similar properties? Or uh, if we don't even know that, what kind of consequences would these properties have for the chain model if they, if they had them? And, and of course, these are best asked in the context where you know, we're not just working in L of R. The chain model is different from L of R. Indeed, it really best in the, con in the uh, context where L or omega is different from L alpha omega for every alpha. So, uh, the question so why do you call it the thorn sequence? Or is it your creation? Or is this um, I mean, I mean the, the letter is thorn. Um, oh, why we choose that letter is uh, theta. Makes the th sound. The so thorn makes the th sound. We're thinking originally of thorn alpha, but then that's also used in other contexts for the syllabic sequence and stuff. So it's something. And, and another question. Okay, so so on one side you have theta, and on the other side you have a sequence of thorn yeah. alphas. So it, it seems like it would be a reasonable question to ask this more locally. Is how I mean, or not? I mean, that's my question. I guess. So if you looked at L of alpha to the omega rather than L of n to the omega, and we looked at, I don't know, the least ordinal to which alpha to the omega can surject or something like yeah. that. I, yeah, that's also, you know, totally a uh, reasonable thing okay. um, to, to consider. I think you'll just get basically an initial segment of this line sequence. Yeah. Okay, so the, the way we try and answer these questions here is by basically just trying to do something and working backwards to say, okay, what assumptions 
kind of are popping up naturally for us to accomplish something. Okay. So as said before, uh, both LMR and the Cheng models have spy dependent choice. To explain what that means, uh, dependent choice is that if we have that all finite length chains have an extension, then there is an aleph not length chain. And you can generalize that to longer chains, basically. So DT kappa says that less than kappa length chains having extensions means that there's a full kappa length chain. And then we can restrict this a little bit by talking about oh, relations over a set as well. And okay. So of course, all of these are just restrictions of the axiom choice, right? Um, so if you have the axiom choice, you can have all of this. Okay. So the, the main motivating question here, the, the goal of this project is, can we force DC kappa or uncountable kappa while still preserving and calculating this down sequence? That's going to be the main goal here. Okay. So the, the answer here is going to be yes, but there's uh, a few caveats. So we don't get full DC kappa. Uh, instead, we get it over the powers of the kappa. That's so a little bit of an unfortunate restriction. Another restriction is that we get this only for boundedly many kappa below aleph omega. Okay. And what's more, uh, the consistency of the hypotheses we use in this context, the, the properties of the thorn sequence, um, the consistency just isn't really known. I mean, outside of you know trivial contexts like we're working in L or something like that. Okay. So a bit of unfortunate stuff, but it, most of these hypotheses we're going to be using are kind of reasonable hypotheses that are just inheriting combinatorial things from what it looks like in LFR. Okay. So how do we begin? Well, let's look at something like LFR. And we can try and force choice of this sort of thing by adding a well ordered bar. So if we uh, force with add omega one, we will add a well ordered bar of length omega one. And the proof of this is actually pretty simple. Um, it's just noting that every subset of omega we can regard as a condition in this proset. Uh, we can concatenate countably many conditions with sequences of these things. And just by a simple density argument, we can just put whatever subset we want on the generic sequence. And so in the end, the generic sequence would be a search action. Okay. So a, a pretty easy um, argument. Uh, but one thing that I've sort of swept under the rug here is that this requires DC to work for a couple of reasons. So one is that um, in order to show that we have distributivity for this post set, we need to make sure that we have DC. Okay? And we need that distributivity because we need to make sure that we aren't adding real numbers or changing what the calculation of omega one is. Right? By the way, I think it's a funny thing that um, this DC is equivalent to the statement that countably closed porting doesn't add new omega sequences. Uh, okay, yeah, so you, you really need it, yeah. So that sort of highlights why we need some DC. Uh, also something to note is that we preserve what theta is supposed to be. So we've, we've changed maybe what omega two is. Omega two is going to be theta, but theta in L of R is gonna be the same in theta of this generic extension of L of R. Okay. So we can prove that pretty easily as well, um, just because if we have this surjection from the reals onto alpha, uh, we can just form this other function in L of R that just says, okay, F of alpha P is gamma, just in case that P forces that the value of alpha is gamma. Okay. So the domain of this capital F, uh, we really can just regard as reals because our post set is basically just reals. And uh, if we have that, this capital F is surjective, in other words, if we have that the little f in the generic extension is surjective, then this capital F would be surjective. And so we get a surjection from the reals onto alpha in the ground model. In other words, 
alpha would have to be less than the original data. Okay, so what that means is just that uh, theta in the generic extension has to be at least as big as it originally was. And so just from some upper absoluteness stuff, uh, the two will have to be the same. Okay, so basically if we if we force with this add omega one uh, subset over L of R, then we have calculated what this first part of the Thorne sequence is, and we have forced some more choice. Um, but can we do something similar for the chain model? Can we just keep going for, further? And if we are, so what are the entries of the Thorne sequence going to be in this case? It's going to be a bit of a question. So one thing we'd like to do is, okay, uh, we force first with adding a subset of omega-1, then we can just force adding a subset of omega-2. And for the same sort of reasons, this will end up well ordering omega-2 to the omega-1. And then we'd like to continue with omega-3 and so on, basically just well ordering more and more stuff. Okay, but if we're going to have a similar argument work, we're going to need more dependent choice and to establish more distributivity to make sure we don't screw up the earlier stages. And so what this means is that at the first part, we need DC omega-1 over basically the power set of omega-1, basically the next post set. And then we need DC omega-2 over the power set of omega-2 for the next post set, and so on. And moreover, we need all this to be preserved by forcing. Okay, so in the chain model, which then ostensibly only satisfies dependent choice, how do we ensure that we have these larger versions of dependent choice? That's going to be the, the sort of difficult part of all this. The rest of it is, I think, very intelligible. Okay. So the idea is we're going to be forcing with all of these uh, at a subset of kappa plus or kappa as like alpha or something. Okay. And what we want to ensure is that at stage n, we can calculate thorn n as kappa plus. And if we have this property of being strongly regular, then we should get more DC, DC kappa plus over now kappa plus plus to the omega. And that'll help us calculate the next element of the thorn sequence. And assuming that we have this thorn n is justified, another property which I'll explain later, then we'll get more DC over now the power set of kappa plus as opposed to this kappa plus plus to the omega distance. Okay. And we want to do this in such a way that we also preserve what these thorn ends are and we preserve you know, these properties of being strongly regular and justified and so forth. And so uh, what the end result is that we can calculate some of the thorn sequence in this way. Okay, So if we, we do this, the, the first thorn zero is going to be omega, and then we're going to force thorn one with beta to be omega two. Then after that, it's just going to be successors. So we're going to get thorn two is omega three, thorn three is omega four, and so on and so forth. And we can go arbitrarily high with this, but the, the limit stage poses some problems. And it's not clear whether you have thorn omega as just omega omega. And assuming that you could even get that, it's not clear that the next one would be maybe omega omega plus two or something like this. It's just, it's not very clear. But I'll get to some of the problems with trying to extend this to the infinite case. And so this is ultimately what we're, what we're proving. Um, if all of these thorn ends are strongly regular and justified, and we can calculate them as successors for the uh, stuff after zero, and we'll be able to get DC kappa over power set of kappa for all of these small kappas. And we also get a form of GCH, which is just a kind of nice consequence. And, and as I said, the, the limit of aleph omega is definitely a limit. Okay, so again, let's just go over what happens with forcing a subset of uh, omega one. So as before, we force that thorn one will be omega two. Um, and by basically the same argument, uh, you'll actually preserve all of the other members of the sequence as well. OK. 
Okay, so what's uh, a more interesting result with this forcing is that we force DC omega one over the power set of omega one. But uh, to do this, we need this strong regularity and being justified property. And, and in essence, uh, as we sort of outline, strong regularity is going to tell us that we have DC omega one over omega two to the omega. And being justified is kind of like saying that we can cover uh, the power set of omega one by this set omega two to the omega. Okay, so I guess it's time for me to finally describe what I mean by strongly regular. Um, so we say that a uh, cardinal kappa is strongly regular if it's regular and the cofinality is strictly bigger than thorn to the less than thorn or any smaller uh, element of the thorn sequence. So in the absence of choice, you might be thinking that this is sort of nonsense because uh, you can't well order thorn to the less than thorn. So what do you mean? What do I exactly do I mean by cofinality and it being bigger than in this case? Um, really, I just mean that any function from thorn to the less than thorn will be bounded in kappa. Okay. Okay, so if, in, the, in the case of uh, theta, in being regular is equivalent to being strongly regular. In this case, um, just kind of for trivial reasons. The only previous thing on the Thorn sequence is omega, and obviously omega is going to be less than the cofinality of theta if it's regular. So, sure. Okay. Uh, what's nice is that this poset is going to preserve strong regularity, which is nice. And this strong regularity is going to give us a small amount of DC omega one. Okay. So if we have that Thorn one is strongly regular. Then, in the generic extension, we're going to get DC omega one over thorn one to the omega. Okay. Uh, so the proof of this isn't too difficult. We basically need to find a closure point and then use that we've well ordered that closure. So if we have a relation on thorn one to the omega, which is close, which in which uh, countable chains have upper bounds, what I can do is I can say, okay. For any small beta, I can look at that relation restricted to beta to the omega. And all of those countable chains have upper bounds in some gamma beta to the omega. Um, and ostensibly, that gamma beta is going to be thorn one, but strong regularity tells us that gamma beta has to be strictly less than thorn one. And okay, so now we can just find a closure point of cofinality omega. Right, thorn one is at least a mega two. Uh, so we get some beta hat such that gamma beta is at most beta hat for every beta less than beta hat. So countable chains in beta hat to the omega have other bounds in beta to the omega. Okay, what's nice though is that because we're less than thorn one, we have this surjection from omega omega onto beta hat to the omega, and we've well ordered omega to the omega as just omega one. So what that means is we really have a surjection of omega one onto beta hat to the omega. Okay. And so now we just translate our, I guess a kind of pullback uh, relation. And this pullback R prime is still going to be countably close because R is. And this R prime, however, uh, can be well ordered if we restrict ourselves to beta hat to the omega. Okay. And because we can well order that domain, we can just construct an omega one length chain and then just translate that back to R. Okay, so if we had countable closure for R, we do this whole song and dance to move this to an R prime, we construct a branch there, translate it back. So we have DC omega one over relations on omega-2 to the omega. Okay, so if we're going to get DC omega-1 over the power set of omega-1, that's where we're making use of what it means to be justified. Uh, and here, what I mean by that is just that I can calculate smaller power sets by stage kappa. Okay. So more, more formally, uh, kappa is justified if for anything smaller on the thorn sequence, I can calculate the power set of thorn to the omega uh, in L kappa 
kappa to the omega and x for some x subset of kappa. Uh, the idea here is that x would be um, basically a uh, like a subset of pod kind of thing. So, uh, what's the height of this small l kappa? Yeah, the kappa <laughs> uh, Yeah, we're organizing it such that this thing has height kappa. Uh, that's something that's just kind of thrown under the rug, but yeah. Um, and this, this definition is uh, a little bit weird. Um, don't worry about it too much. Uh, the main thing that we care about with this is just that um, if this holds, then we get a search action. In particular, uh, we get a search action from kappa to the omega onto the power set of thorn for any smaller thing, and really onto the power set of thorn to the omega. Okay. So that's, that's mostly what we're going to be using this for. Okay, so if we have that, say, thorn one is justified, uh, then we'll get DC omega one over the power set of omega one. Why? Well, if we have thorn one is justified, we have this canonical surjection. Okay? Now, technically, this is coming from uh, V as the, the chain model. And then you're doing a little bit of forcing machinery with names to show that you get this uh, surjection still in the generic extension, but it works out just fine. So if we have a relation on the power set of omega one, what that means is that we can consider the pullback on for this relation on thorn one to the omega. Okay. And again, if we have this um, this closure under countable chains uh, that should also hold for R prime. And R prime, we have DC omega one over that relation. And so we can form an omega one chain for that. And then we can just push that forward to a chain for R. Okay. So in the end, what we have then is a little bit more DC, and we've calculated the limit. Okay, but what about, say, Thorn 2? Uh, and then how do we get more DC over the next post set, right? I mean, the, the obvious thing to do uh, is, well, we have DC omega 1 over the next post set, so we should just force with that post set. Uh, and this is basically what we're doing, and we just kind of hope it works out. And it does, assuming that we have these nice properties for the rest of the elements of the Thorn sequence. And so in, in just the same way as adding a subset of omega-1 uh, well ordered the power set of omega, adding a subset of omega-2 well orders the power set of omega-1. Again, it's just about concatenating conditions and finding a generic sequence that enumerates all the power set. Okay. So from that, we also get that omega-2 to the omega-1 is just going to be uh, omega-2. Okay. And that's just a, a very simple proof. So the, the difficult part is again with this DC capital business, getting more choice. So before uh, we use strong regularity to get DC kappa over basically kappa to the or kappa plus to the omega last time. Um, but here we also use that strong regularity to show that we're preserving the Born sequence. As long as we have an initial segment of the point sequence as strongly regular, we preserve all those things in the point sequence. Okay. So uh, if we have something that's less than omega 2, we just use distributivity. And the fact that we have already sort of well ordered thorn beta to the omega. And for the things that are bigger than omega 2, uh, it's going to be basically the same sort of proof before. Um, if we have a surjection from thorn beta to the omega onto thorn beta plus one, as calculated in V, but the surjection is in the generic extension, um, then what we end up with is really just going to be a surjection in V with some of this forcing machinery on it from uh, thorn beta to the omega, or sorry, thorn beta to the less than thorn beta onto thorn beta plus one. And so if we have strong regularity of thorn beta plus one, we can't have this. And so um, 
we have the same calculation for thorn beta plus one. Limit stages are obvious, so we get this result. Okay, so let me just recap everything that we know at this point. We're working in the chain model. Uh, we're assuming that basically everything we want to work with is strongly regulated. And we get that having a subset of omega one well orders the reals, forces thorn one to be omega two. Both of these things are the, the least they possibly can be. Uh, it also preserves the other elements of the thorn sequence and their strong regularity. And now, uh, what we do is we get more DC over the next thing we want to force over. So at this point, after we force with adding subset of omega one, we have the same sort of analysis for add omega two. So we've well ordered the power set of omega one. We've calculated thorn two as just going to be omega three. And both of these are the least they can be. And we also preserve the thorn sequence in their strong regularity. Okay, so the next thing we want to show then is just that we have more DC. Okay. So as before, we get DC omega two over this omega three to the omega first, and then we uh, use that to get it over the power set of omega two. So if we have a relation on omega three to the omega that is less than omega two closed. Again, what we can do is we uh, just make sure that in any beta to the omega, we find bounds in some gamma beta to the omega, and strong regularity implies that that bound will be below the next element of the thorn sequence. It'll be below thorn two, in other words, omega three. So we can find a closure point, code finality omega two. Again, we can well order that omega two to the omega. And so, in the end, if we sort of restrict our relation down to this closure point and take a pullback with this well ordering business, we can actually just construct an omega two length chain. And so that'll give us DC omega two over omega two, omega three to the omega. And then again, we can translate this to the power set omega two, uh, assuming that it's justified, assuming that uh, omega three is justified. And again, the reason why is that we have this canonical surjection V, and throwing some of these forcing details under the rug, uh, this becomes a surjection in VG of omega three to the omega onto the power set of omega two. Again, uh, being justified just tells you that you have these surjections onto lower things than the thorn sequence. Okay, so. We have any uh, less than omega two length uh, closed relation over the power set of omega two. Again, we can pull that back to now this other thing where we can find a chain, uh, omega two length chain, and we can push that forward and get a chain for the original relation that we wanted. So this will establish that we have DC omega two over the power set of omega two. And we can really just continue the same idea going further and further along, okay? And then the general process is we add a well order through adding a subset of kappa plus. We make sure that this preserves strong regularity and the members of the foreign sequence. We use a little bit of combinatorics to calculate the next two members of the foreign sequence. We then get kappa, a DC kappa plus over kappa plus plus omega. Being justified allows us to kind of Get this to DC cap plus with the power set of cap plus, which means that we can then force with adding a subset of cap plus plus, and we just keep repeating this. Okay. And so the result is that we can do this arbitrarily high finite number of times. Um, so we can calculate going zero is omega, so on and so forth, but we have to stop at some finite point. And uh, the reason why we can't just Consider the infinite iteration of all these things uh, is well, there's there's several issues that come up. Okay, so the first question is if you try and do this, what support are you using? Right? If you try and do something like finite support, you, you might be adding these countable sequences that ends up changing the thorn sequence. And maybe you, you don't care about that, and you just want to force 
uh, enough more DC not using this idea, but you know, it might break that, break things later. Uh, and even if you could get around that point, um, if you have this big iteration, you can't really break it up too easily because any initial stage, I mean, you typically have this big long iteration and you break it up into this uh, initial segment and then this tail forcing. And you can't really argue much about this tail forcing because you don't have enough DC over that big poset. You only have DC L of N over the power set of L of N. But this tail post set, you know, ostensibly is going to be very large, like it's going to be at least out of omega. So we can't really argue about its distributivity properties or anything like that. Again, maybe this is something that can be worked around, but uh, it's uh, a problem. Yeah. Uh, and again, you can continue with the, the iteration regardless of these properties. But again, it's, it's just not clear that you're going to be preserving the, the Thorn sequence calculation, which is kind of what we were using to be able to um, get more DC. Yeah. OK, so overall, the, the, the suggestion here, where you might think of it as conjecture, is that these are reasonable assumptions about the Thorn sequence and the chain model. So the idea is that uh, the things of Cofinality that aren't just omega, um, because you end up with things about Koenig's lemma running into the mix, uh, then you should have that Thorn alpha should be strongly regular and justified. Or really just, um, I guess for that first point, it should just be successors. But regardless, you have that most of these things are strongly regular and justified. And then you should have that the successors are calculated as just uh, successor cardinals of the previous ones. And so we, we sort of have a, a partial result of this for these uh, extensions of the chain model. Um, but you know, ostensibly, this is a different theory from the you know, model we started with. So who knows? Uh, obviously, if B plus L, these are all true. But again, we mostly care about the case where we don't have the excellent choice where things like um, strong regularity, all this sort of stuff is fine <laughs> as assumptions. Um, yeah. So moving forward, I mean, there's there's a lot of questions that we can then ask about this Thorn sequence and variations of the chain model. Um, for instance, it's, it's not really clear that if we start with L Thorn of 2 to the omega, if that models that V equals L Thorn 1 to the omega. Um, it's not clear if this model will think that Thorn 2 is Thorn one plus always, uh, and you know if it maybe it doesn't maybe that could give you a counterexample to the first point. It's um, not really clear though. Uh, another question is whether something like DC holds in L of bounded sequences of thorn omega to the omega. Um, so in other words, if we take a look at all countable sequences of thorn n for small n. Do we still get DC in this large model? Uh, it's it's not really clear because the usual proof of DC requires you to use potentially these unbounded sequences. And uh, more generally, uh, in the case of L of R and theta, a lot of these results about theta are coming from determinacy axioms, and all these determinacy axioms are basically talking about stuff that happens below theta. So. If we want maybe some of these similar results to happen for the Thorn sequence, we might need to have generalizations of these determinacy axioms that talk about things above theta. Okay. And whether or not there are anything like that uh, is uh, a bit of a problem. And again, with all of these things, uh, how strong regularity or being justified comes into the mix here uh, is, again, also unknown. Uh, yeah, that's. We'll talk. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, there any questions? There are a few questions during the talk already. Are there questions from the audience, maybe? Yeah. 
Okay. I, could I ask a question? Um, so I'm trying to think, you know, what could we assume about the outside universe, the, the full axiom of choice universe, to understand better these things about strong regularity and justification at all? If we just want a determinacy, we would want enough wood and cardinals in the outside universe, and then all of our satisfies determinacy. Everything is wonderful. Is there anything known about if you assume more? So it's more that I have a proper class of strongly of super compact cardinals. Assume even more if you want. Um, does that tell you anything about these these conjectures, strong regularity, and so on? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, I, as of yet, I don't think anything is known. Um, what like the the consistency level of most of this stuff is just kind of unknown in non-trivial contexts. So, what kind of large cardinal strength any of this stuff has? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. It's, which is unfortunate, but um, yeah, not sure. Thank you. Any, any further questions? All right, well, uh, thank you very much again. Yeah.